Hey YouTube, it's me, Jen, your Pudgy Picker, and this time I actually have an auction haul. I've been going to this particular auction. It's held once a month, um, and it is the second Wednesday of each month. I've been finding some pretty good stuff. Since it is not real often or not every week or not every other week, it can be a long evening. They open at 11 uh, to start having their preview. You can look at pictures online. You can go there physically and handle and look up and touch everything. And then at 6 o'clock, the auction starts. And I didn't get out of there till 10, till 11. <laughs> it was a long uh, evening, but I did get some good stuff. I spent, I think, about $108. Got some really good stuff for my booth and a few things for eBay. And yes, something for me. And my daughter, of course, because she went with me and uh, I felt sorry for her sitting there bored. <laughs> she said she had a good time, but yeah, it wasn't as much her cup of tea as it is mine. Uh, before we get started, I do want to shout out The Reselling Report. And Eckhart now has a new channel uh, where you don't see her. You could just listen to her. She talks about all the new things that are going on within eBay, Poshmark, um, Amazon and other selling platforms, Etsy as well. Um, it's really interesting because I don't have a lot of time to dig around and find news on eBay or different things that are going on or how people feel about it. So it's kind of nice to get her report every weekday on her channel and see what is going on. And I also like a good podcast. So to be able to listen and not have to keep looking at the screen when me, I'm getting stuff researched and ready to sell or photographed, A positive. I just love it. I only have one issue with it, and it is not long enough. Come on, Ann. you got to make it a little longer. Stretch. Stretch those words. <laughs> so, yeah, I wanted to shout her out and uh, make sure that you go over there. She's trying to get to 1,000 subscribers and a certain amount of view time to become monetized because it is a job, and what she's doing and putting forth that effort is work. So let's jump right in to my auction. You will notice that some of these items are in like a box lid or a box themselves. And sometimes they'll have things in a stack. That is one item. So when you bid on something, you can take the entire stack. So I don't remember the exact prices that I paid, but like I said, everything you see here was $108. So uh, first thing I got for us, guess what? More puzzles. <laughs> This is the current puzzle we're working on. It is a sushi puzzle. It's only 550 pieces. I did pick it up at the thrift store. I kind of like to do these ones. It's a quick, you know, couple of hours between the two of us project. But we have been doing 1,000 pieces. I don't mind more pieces, but I don't like small pieces. This is a nice size piece. And this is a pretty big one. So it'll be pretty cool. So there's what it looks like. Okay, so these puzzles were all in one stack. I paid $20 for the whole stack. But if you count it out between all of them, that's $4 a piece. These, I love the artistry of this. Ken Zilla, um, he has these very interesting old-fashioned vintage uh, ones, which is really cool when you're actually doing the puzzle. This is called Bumper Crop. So we got boats and campers and cars and barns and houses really awesome love the colors in it so again that one's a thousand piece um there's this one same artist this one's called a little boy's dream so he's driving his little pedal car and then they're washing the old-fashioned police car and a fire truck on that cool like old-fashioned main street this one is pretty cool it's called timber lodge it's got all the little log cabins and little you know, like vacation homes, and we're out here fishing. <laughs> this one I actually bought. It's It was in a different box, but the box was open, so I'm going to re-donate that one. But you will recognize this if you've seen some of my puzzle hauls before. This one's called a Country Auction. And, of course, the whole wheeling and dealing and selling your wares. You know me as a reseller. I'm all about it. So pretty cool, huh? And you can tell he looks like he's selling some stuff right here. Pretty cool. This one I think I'm going to sell because it looks too hard and it's not a subject matter I'm crazy about. This is bird migration. Boring. No, sorry. If you like birds and bird migration, then 
uh, my hat's off to you. But this one's going for about $15 online. So this will mostly pay for the stack. So I'm pretty happy about that. Uh, this box lot was kind of a mixed bag. In an auction, uh, most of the time, uh, the auction, when you buy something, you have to take it. You can't just leave it behind. There are a few auctions that say you can leave stuff behind. Um, this one, it came with these uh, four birds. And then this very cool boat with all the accessories. It's got a life preserver and a trap and a rope. All kinds of cool little things. It is pretty dusty, if you notice, so I will have to do a little bit of cleaning, but that will go in my booth for probably, I'd say, $20 to $22. These ducks, I'm not sure. I'm going to show you the mark on them, and if you recognize it, please tell me. I have no idea what that is. This one, the mark's a little bit darker than this one. It's kind of faded. I believe it is probably Chinese or Japanese. They have like this thing tied on their nose. I'm not sure. It's got a little flower there. These are wood. Um, so I'm going to look those up, see what they are. Um, this is just a basic little duck. I will put him in my nautical stuff. This I'm really fascinated with. You can tell it is wood. The bottom is kind of, you know, rustic and rough. This is so polished. It feels like stone almost. So what I'm going to do is I have Howard's Wood Restorer. I will polish that up and it, you know, darkens that up really nice. And that will go out to my booth. He will probably be 7 He will be probably 12 to $14 once he's done. So not bad for just a small flat of items. These are so cute. I did a little bit of research on them because when I got home it was kind of late and... I just have a gut feeling about some things. Sometimes I look up stuff. Other times I just think uh, nobody else has taken that. And it's very interesting. So let's grab it up. So I got a stack of these. This one says Baby Jumping Jacks. And it says Kevin's First Shoes. And it has 527.66. So these are vintage Baby shoes. Aren't they adorable? Usually when I see these, they are bronzed. The only thing is these, as you can tell, they look like they have been not necessarily painted, but like recoded or something. So they're not in your original condition. These, I did look this up. The box alone was selling for $13 to $14. Uh, Pied Piper of Hamlin. Uh, or Pied Piper Shoes. Again, these are Kevin's. And it says, I don't know, is it two years, two months? But uh, these are, whoops, I'll drop the lid. Again, they're in good condition, but you can tell that they've been repainted or repolished or whatever. Uh, the shoelaces are in there. Uh, the one I looked up, these are probably newer, but the one said they were from the 20s. I don't think they're that old. Uh, but there's two boxes of the Pied Piper. And then there's a whole bunch of these foot traits. Um, the solid value shoe. And all of these, too, are just the little basic white shoes. Aren't they adorable? But you can tell whoever painted or polished these went over where they're supposed to and got it like on the sole oh, that's really coming out sharp isn't it usually when i do up close it just laughs at me um this says that they are made uh in pennsylvania made in usa uh creator and son so i'm going to do a more in-depth ser uh, search on these this entire stack was five dollars so I was pretty pleased with that. I think it was maybe seven fifty. Uh, again, they do a lot of the bigger, more expensive items, and then all of the stuff I got was on the back tables. So uh, that's they do that last, and it doesn't bring them as much money. There's less people that stick around that late. So time to pick up a good deal if you're willing to put in the time to sit there. <laughs> I got this for my daughter. This I think was only five dollars. And it's got a whole bunch of artist uh, paint brushes. There's some uh, drawing pencils. Uh, there's 
a T square. Looks like there's a, uh, like a paint spatula in here. If I can take it up, yeah. So this is stuff that she will use. She actually did a painting of uh, purple flowers for me upstairs. I'll have to show it to you one of these days when I'm sitting at my desk. But uh, I grabbed that up from for her. This item I got pretty cheaply as well. It is a cuckoo clock. I believe it's a black forest. Uh, or not, what is it? Not black. Yeah, black forest, German. Um, it has this front piece. Uh, it has the pendulum. It has the two weights. I did hang it up on the wall. It does cuckoo when you move the uh, the arms, but the uh, the the right hand weight is the minutes. The left hand is the hours. The hour one is just you can pull the chain from either side, and it's just it's not engaging in there. So I'm gonna look it up and see what I can sell it for as is or I can even sell it for parts. Um, people who repair these are always looking for pieces, parts, and that may end up being a cheaper way to do it. I can sell, um, you know, the facade, I could sell any of the mechanisms, I could sell the weights. So either way, it was worth picking up. It was on the back tables. Had it been working, it would have been hung up and it would have gone for a lot more money. I got this red pitcher. I didn't, I got it pretty cheap, but I thought it was really cool. I didn't look up the brand, um, but I will probably maybe just use that for flowers or display purposes or just sell it the way it is in my booth. Got this very large clock. I did pay $10 for this. It is metal, um, very nice condition. Um, it's an Accurite, so we'll see how that one goes. But uh, that'll probably go in my booth. I will look it up online just in case it's worth something more. It's not old. It's not spectacular. It's, you know, got this, you know, man-made patina on it. But very cool. I did get me a lion. He's not plaster. He is not solid. He's heavy, but not as heavy as if he were solid. Probably going to repaint him and then take him out to my booth. Maybe something where he can be outside, so if someone wants to use him in a garden, that would be great. And the last two, three items, I'm gonna actually show you this over here. Uh, this is one of those items I didn't plan on buying, but it went cheap enough where I thought it was uh, worth the investment. I don't know, it's almost got like an Aztec Mexican kind of vibe to it. It is a hand-tooled leather attache bag. It is not uh, does not have a, you know, maker's mark or anything, um, but this would be a cool piece to carry around. Um, the handles, uh, one of them is, uh, as you can see, this was stitched and it, it came undone. So I will probably just leave it as is and disclose. Here's the other side. So if you know anything about this, uh, let me know. It's a, it's a decent size. Be nice for just papers and basic office stuff. Here's the bottom, but very beautiful. Um, I have sold uh, hand-tooled leather, wallets, bags, etc. depending on the design and the age, and of course the condition, depends on how much they go, but I figured for, I think probably $5 I paid for it, it was worth uh, snatching it up. Now, these items are something I have needed in my booth for some time. I have different vignettes, if you will, uh, areas that are themed out for different uh, styles or different uh, decor rooms. I do have uh, an African shelf. I have been out of African animal statues as well as African statues for quite some time. I have a few that are hanging on the wall, but nothing sitting on the shelf. So I did get these two. Let me show you that one first. I don't think he belongs in here, to be honest with you. Uh, he looks like a horse of some sort, but I, he's not African. Um, I have these two ladies here with the earrings, solid wood. Again, I will use my Howard Wood Restore to clean them up. Uh, this one, it looks like her uh, neck piece. I may have to do a little bit of work on that. Uh, but it has earrings, beautiful face on there. And then these two, 
or like a black wood, I would imagine. Uh, markings on the face. And then this one is probably the woman with the uh, necklaces on and the long ears. Uh, so these will probably be sold as a set. These individually and these probably individually. I sell all kinds of these types uh, all the time and they do quite well. And then this one is, so this is actually probably a set too. There's a man and then this one is a lady with a basket on top of her head. Looks like something might have been on there and broken. I'll have to repair that or at least file it down. Ooh, her arm is missing. You know what? See, this is what happens when you don't look closely at things. <laughs> oh, you know what? That was her hand and that was her arm. See, you got to pay better attention. See, I show you my mistakes when I make them because in my exuberance to get these, still would have paid. I'm going to make money on it definitely, but I probably will not be able to salvage that piece. And I will probably just go ahead and re-donate because somebody will pick it up. I don't like just throwing stuff away. Um, all these little animals, some of these really don't make any sense being in here. We have a little wooden bird. Uh, we have a uh, heron made out of a horn of some sort. A little stand. That'll definitely sell. This is made in India. It's a brass piece. It is an ashtray. May just put that in my booth. I don't know. But I have uh, different animals. Oh, I didn't even see. She's got a little baby. We have a lion. We have several elephants. Um, this one is really heavy. Uh, him. I think I have one elephant that's missing a tusk. This uh, small, he see he has a he has a break too, yeah. But mainly, it was definitely worth getting um, this one. And then this one, I've seen the wildebeest before, but I've never seen one laying down. Isn't that beautiful with the bones and his spine? Oh, love it. And I think this is the one that's missing. I do have toothpicks, so I could probably take that out and uh, do a little surgery. This one could actually probably be sold as a set. You have one laying down, one standing up. You have some kind of little Brady Bunch tiki from the Hawaiian episode. Do you remember that? <laughs> um, carved in New Zealand. So again, do my research on these. But that is the second box. So that is all that I got this time. Did spare, spend a fair amount of money. I will definitely make that back with the uh, shoes and probably the birdhouse as well, or the bird um, cuckoo clock. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment down below, and I will see you guys next time in the description box, of course, description of, of my uh, Facebook group. You can follow me on social media, uh, Instagram and Twitter, and my Antique Booth Talk, the Facebook group, again, uh, with Tanya. Uh, it's going strong, enjoying a lot of uh, good information over there. So my email address, my snail mail, and a link to my eBay stores all in the description box. And uh, also subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you guys next time. And until then, happy picking! Bye!